welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 285, in order successor in a binary search tree. Given the root of a binary search tree and a node p in it, return the in order successor of that node in the binary search tree. If the given node has no in order successor in the tree, return null. The successor of a node p is the node with the smallest key greater than p.val. So for example, if we were given that p equals 4, then we should be returning 5, because that's the next greatest element, um, you know, greater than 4. So how might we solve this problem? Well, an immediate naive solution is simply to perform an in-order traversal of this binary tree. So we're going to do the in-order uh, traversal. And the reason that we do an in-order traversal is remember that for a binary search tree, if we perform an in-order traversal, it's going to return the nodes in sorted order. So for example, it would return one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you know we'd return an array like this. Then what we could do is traverse this array and find our node, um, you know, p equals four here. So we'd find the node, and then the, ne the next greatest element is simply the element whose index is one greater than the one that we found for. If it happens to be that we found the you know element we're looking for and it's at the end, then there is no in order successor and we would simply return none. But in this case, it's the five. So this is the naive solution. So you know we'll achieve a runtime of big O of n, which doesn't seem that bad, but because we need this array to store the values, we're also going to have a big O of n uh, space complexity, which we can actually bring down to big O of 1 if we are a little bit more clever and figure out how to do this in place without needing to parse out the entirety of the uh, binary search tree first. So let's think about how we might solve that more optimally. So we went over the naive solution to this problem, but I mentioned that there's a better solution in which we can actually use no space. Well, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to make use of the properties of our binary search tree. And remember that in a binary search tree for any given node, so let's say we're at this node five, every node in its left subtree must have a value less than five, and every node in its right subtree must have a value greater than five. And that is the definition of a binary search tree. We can know that this is true because we're given a valid binary search tree. So what we want to do is for this algorithm, we're going to start at the root. And what we're going to do is we're going to check because root is our current element that we're at. We're going to check if the current element, so this five is actually greater than or is it less than our um, value four here. And why is this significant? If the value is actually less than what we're looking for, then that tells us that we don't have to explore anything in the right, uh, sorry, in the left subtree, because we know that all values are going to be less uh, than the current element. And if the current element is already too small, then going left, there's no point. In that case, we just want to go right and then retry our logic. So what is our core logic here? In this case, five is actually greater than four. So what we're going to do is since five is greater than four, five is a potential in order successor um, of the node four. In this case, it is the actual in order successor, but we wouldn't know that without exploring the rest of the tree. So we're going to say that five is a potential successor. So we're going to set up a variable and we're going to say successor and we're going to set it originally equal to none. But now that we found a value that's greater than four, we're going to overwrite it and now say it equals to five. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the left subtree of five and then look for another value that is greater than four in hopes of finding, you know, a successor that's now a little bit closer to four than five was. And we're going to continue this. So we go to this three and we see that, OK, well, you know, this three is actually, you know, too, too small. So that means that we can ignore this left subtree entirely because we know that it's we're not going to find a solution here. So we're going to have to go into its right subtree. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to see that we're at four, which is our value. So, you know, obviously we don't want to say that something is an in order successor of itself. So what we're going to try to do now is since this value is, you know, equal to four, 
uh, we would want to go into its right subtree to hopefully find a larger value. But when we go to its right subtree, we're going to see that it's actually none. And at this point, our, you know, traversal will terminate and we, you know, can simply return whatever successor we found. So it's going to be this five. Now let's look at a different example where instead of saying that our um, six, that P is going to be um, four, let's say it equals to five. So what do we do? So we're at this node five, which means that, um, you know, we are equal to the node that we're looking for. So obviously this can't be our successor because, you know, it's the node that we're looking for. So what we need to do now is realize, well, if we're going to look for an element that's larger than five, we can't do it in this right subtree or in the left subtree, sorry, because every node here is going to be less than five. So that means that we have to go into our right subtree and we're going to end up at this node six. So is this node six greater than our node five? Yes, which means that it's a potential in order successor. So we're going to say successor is now going to equal this node six. And what we're going to do now is, OK, what we want to do is we want to go into its left subtree because this node is actually greater than six or sorry, greater than five. And what we're going to want to do is hopefully find a value that's closer to five. So we try to go into its left subtree and we see that it's none. And now our iteration will finish because there's nowhere else for us to go, right? We can't go up the tree. We can only go into its left or right children. <clears throat> so at this point we would finish and we can return that the successor is actually six. So that's the general algorithm we want to use. It's a little bit confusing, but essentially what we want to do is we're going to have a node, which is going to be, you know, our current node representing like where we are in the iteration. And if the current node, its value is actually greater than or equal to the value that we're looking for, then what we want to do is we want to go into the right subtree of that value and hopefully search for something that is, um, you know, a little bit smaller. And then what we want to do otherwise, so, you know, we'd end up at this six. And if our value is actually, you know, less than or equal to the um, value, sorry, if, if P is actually less than or equal to the value that we're currently at, then this node becomes, you know, a successor candidate. And we can keep track of this and hopefully find, you know, better successors as we go down the tree. So it is a little bit confusing to explain it, but I think once you see the code, it's just a few lines and it's really simple. I think it's more of just wrapping your head around why it works and how we can use the properties of a binary search tree. So let's go into the actual editor and we can write this out and it should be a whole lot clearer than, act than the actual diagram ever will be. So I'll see you there. Now it's time to write the code. Remember that we need a variable to track our successor and originally it's going to be none. In the case that we actually can't find a successor, we want to just return none. And what we're going to do after we do all of our processing is to return whatever successor we found. So we're going to say successor is going to equal to none. And what we want to do now is iterate through our tree while we still can. So basically, we're going to try going to left or right subtrees uh, while you know we still have nodes to process. And when we hit a null node, that's when our iteration is going to end. So we're going to say while root, we're going to say if p.val so the node that we're looking for, while its value is actually greater than or equal to the current node that we're at, then that means that um, we want to go into its right subtree to potentially find that next larger value, right? Because we're looking for the in order successor of P. So if P's value is already too big, then that means that we have to go into the right subtree in to potentially find a larger value. We could ignore the left subtree because we know that if you know, this root.val is already too small, then going into its left subtree, there would be no point because we're just going to find smaller values. We need to go into the right subtree and use that property of a binary search tree to hopefully find a bigger value. So in this case, we're going to say root is now going to be root.right. So we're going to go into the right subtree of our current node. Otherwise, what we need to do is the node that we're at is actually a potential successor. So we're going to set it to be you know, the current node that we're at, this root. And then we're gonna go into the left subtree to hopefully find one that's actually closer to you know, our target P because we wanna get the, the next largest node. We don't want just any larger node. We want the one that's closest as possible to the node itself. 
And then what we do is we're going to go into the left subtree to look for it. So we're going to do that until obviously our iteration finishes when root becomes null. At some point, doing this root.right or root.left will give us a null node, and then we can stop processing because we know that we've done it. At this point, all we have to do is simply return the successor, oops, successor, and we're done. So let's submit that, double check that it works, and it does. Cool. So what is the runtime complexity of this algorithm? Well, the runtime complexity is going to be big O of n. In the case that we don't have a balanced binary search tree, it's going to take big O of n time. If we had a balanced tree, it would take on average, you know, log n time because it's a binary search tree. But because we can't be guaranteed to have a balanced binary search tree, it's going to be big O of n. You know, think of it as like being a tree that's like all one, you know, all right nodes or like all left nodes, right? We would potentially have to go to that very bottom node to find our solution. What is the space complexity? Well, because we're doing everything in place here and, you know, we don't define any extra space except for this like successor variable, which is just holding, um, you know, basically like a pointer to a node. This is going to be our constant space solution. And, you know, this while loop can be thought of like the as the iterative solution. We're not actually doing anything recursively here. So this is going to be a constant space solution. And, you know, this is going to be the best solution that you can do. So we were able to bring down that big O of n runtime by doing it the naive way where we just parsed out all the elements and then tried to find the next one in the list of the sorted elements that we got back from the inner order traversal. So that is obviously one way you could do it, but your interviewer will probably ask you as a follow up to solve it in constant space. So you definitely want to know the solution. Anyway, that's going to be how you solve this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any videos you'd like to see in the future, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to make those videos for you guys. Just tell me what you want to see and I'll do my best. So in the meantime, happy coding. Bye.